Okay, so in this video, we are going to be looking at two entry-level cameras from two completely different manufacturers. On one hand, we've got Pentax, and on the other hand, we've got Canon. Now, between the Pentax and Canon, they are both entry-level cameras. We're looking at the Pentax K30 versus the Canon Rebel T4i, also known as the 650D in other markets. So what were the manufacturer's thought processes between these two cameras? Which actual kind of market, is it strictly beginner, beginner? Or can you grow with each camera? We're gonna look at these different parameters. Now, I will make a mention that unfortunately, I can't exactly do a direct uh, OVF style shooting experience uh, between the two cameras because unfortunately my Pentax K30 is no longer autofocusing through the viewfinder. I've done the cleaning, I've checked everything, I've cleaned the mirror, I've cleaned the autofocus sensor at the very bottom of the camera, I've reset things, it's not aperture block, that is not the issue, the aperture works fine, it's strictly related to the autofocus. So. I'm going to have to do a live view uh, thing and then just you'll just have to trust me. I've, I've used the K30 more than enough time for more than enough years shooting professionally uh, nightclub. I was a resident nightclub photographer. I used it extensively for that. Made a lot of money off that camera. It owes me absolutely nothing. Uh, so like muscle memory, I know what the feel and I know what that camera is like to shoot with. So I'm going to use that as my benchmark for how the experience is with the Canon T4i. Uh, with that said, uh, another thing to keep in mind is the Pentax K30 is fully weather sealed. The Canon T4i is not. The Pentax also has two control dials, one on the front, one on the rear. The Canon T4i does not. However, is that really that big of a deal? Let's uh, just take a look at the design of both cameras and uh, just get right into it now. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the ergonomics. Now, as you can see, the white camera is the K30 and on the left or at the top here is the Canon Rebel T4i slash 650D. Now, in regards to ergonomics, the first thing that you'll notice is the grip size. The grip size on the K30 is much more substantial and it has a very nice cutout, uh, right? Perfectly suited for your uh, finger to rest and grip the camera, completely coated in rubber all the way around. It's very, very well thought out, very nice, comfortable to hold, very nice design. Uh, the T4i on the other hand, uh, the grip is very shallow. It's not a very deep grip. Um, th there's a lot of gap when you're fully holding, when you're fully gripping the camera. There, there's a lot of gap between uh, the bend of your fingers and the actual shutter button and the rest of the body. Now, with the shutter button, the angle on it is facing more towards the horizontal side. And this is a Canon staple. Pretty much all their cameras have that design. It does feel nice. And the shutter action actually is very smooth, very well thought out. I do like it. Uh, the Pentax is a bit more stiff. Uh, there is a smoother action and there's two notches. I don't know if you can hear this. There's two stop points. So there's a stop point for the autofocus and then you press again and you hear, you feel another click and then that's the shutter release. The K30, it's just, you press down, there's a bit of resistance, that's the autofocus, but there's no actual feedback to let you know that you've activated the autofocus and then you click. Different methodologies. Uh, lens wise, this is the 17, 85, uh, I believe it's uh, it's an ultrasonic motor EFS 1785 f4 to 5.6. Not the greatest, especially for a 17 millimeter wide lens. Uh, however, this is 18 135 on the K30, and that is 3.5 to 5.6. So I think the 18 135, just due to the lower aperture at 18 millimeters is a better creative lens. Uh, you can get more of that background blur, even though it does not maintain 
3.5 for very long. The lenses do rotate opposite each other. Canon is always the opposite way. So if you want to zoom in, you have to rotate towards the left. If you want to zoom in on a Pentax, you rotate towards the right. So clockwise versus counterclockwise, those are some differences. Uh, now let's get into the actual feel of the two different cameras. Now in regards to the feel, this is a, this is a light DSLR. It is a light camera. It feels light. Uh, the controls are decent. However, the on off switching doesn't really instill much confidence. Uh, the control dial in the front, just everything's, it's very plasticky and it just, it doesn't have that reliability satisfaction. Uh, it's, it's really hard to put down in words, uh, but this is clearly an entry-level camera. Absolutely, clearly an entry-level camera. The construction is very light plastics. Like this is the SD card area. Bottom grip. Or battery area. Just everything is very plasticky. They are both made out of uh, polycarbonate uh, kind of material. Uh, this is, I think this is mainly plastic housing versus the K30, which is completely polycarbonate according to the specs that Pentax released. And you can tell it is a lot more solid. Here's the SD card area. Battery. Much more solid sounding camera. Much, much more solid sounding. Now, in regards to the button layout, as I had mentioned before, the Canon T4i does not have a rear control dial. It does have this nice rubber grip though, which does actually fit the thumb very, very, very well. It does fit the thumb very well. The one thing I'm not crazy about is the playback button, which is at the very bottom here. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I like where the K30 has it. It's mounted right up here, so you can still be holding the camera. Just quickly toggle. Uh, the delete button is also at the bottom here on the T4i. Uh, other than that, um, the controls are pretty good. You have your uh, aperture value switch here. So if you need to switch the aperture value, you can easily do that. Uh, let's just go into manual mode here. And I like their uh, menu. It actually explains what all, every single setting you turn this to, it explains what it actually is and what it does. It has a very nice user interface. They did a really good job, and that is one thing Canon does do regularly, and I think they've nailed that element of it. Uh, so if you want to change the shutter speed, you just use the front control dial, as you'll see here, shutter speed's changing, right? If you want to change the aperture, then you have to press and hold the aperture value button, which is this one right here. Press and hold, and then change the aperture value. So it's a little more difficult to do on the fly instead of having a rear control dial to run the aperture and a front control dial to run the shutter as separate instances. I'm not a big one control dial fan whatsoever, uh, but this is an entry level camera. Mind you, so is the K30. Now, where the Canon actually starts to show ingenuity is this was the first camera with a touchscreen, as far as I understand. So with that, even when you're in a shooting mode, there's a quick menu thing here, and you can just hit that, and it brings up your menu. It brings up all your shooting settings, and you can change all the various parameters. Uh, let's see, I wanna change the 
autofocus here. Uh, let's change. And then it tells you to use the dial. So it's changing to one shot. Uh, AI focus, AI servo. So very, very intuitive. And even in 2020 slash 2021, when Pentax released the K3 Mark III, they still don't have a function like this. And this is an entry level camera from 2012. So yes, Pentax missed the mark completely in regards to full integration of a touchscreen. They should have actually done more with the touchscreen on the K3 Mark III. Uh, obviously, this also does have the flip out screen. So, yeah, you know, and it's fully rotatable, all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah, so full touchscreen. The menu's not too bad to use. Actually, let me flip this over, see if I can uh, navigate this this way. Uh, let's see, let me bring up the regular menu it's on this side. There we go. And you can actually just use your finger and scroll across and get to every single different setting. Scroll up and down. So, Menu navigation with the touchscreen, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job that uh, Canon has done with this. Absolutely beautiful. I'm actually pretty impressed, pretty impressed. Uh, now with the scene modes, let's just see what the various scene modes are. It does have a full green, as they call it, scene intelligent mode. The T4i, the actual scene modes it has, full green auto, flash off, creative auto, portrait, I believe that's landscape, macro, or as they call it, close up, sports, <laughs> night portrait, handheld night scene, HDR backlight control, and that's it. Those are the scene modes. Now, this is where Pentax went way above and beyond. The K30 has the following scene modes. A moving object, night scene, portrait, sunset, blue sky, forest, night scene, night scene HDR, night snap, food, pet, kids, surf and snow, Backlight silhouette, candlelight, stage lighting, museum, portrait, landscape, macro. A lot more is built into the K30 than there is on the Canon T4i. However, in regards to video shooting, which I know Pentaxians do not do video, but the K30 does not have continuous autofocus in video. The T4i actually does have continuous autofocus in video. It does have a hybrid autofocus system that does continuous uh, autofocus while you're shooting video. It was the first instance that that was done. It's not very good. Um, the quality of the video footage that it does produce is fairly decent. Uh, and this is fairly decent as well. Uh, but again, they're both entry level. So don't expect, you know, log or s log or anything like that you know or any of the advanced video functions that, that they're not there uh however the t4i does have a microphone and headphone uh jack for shooting video let's see so we just got it here at your headphone and microphone ports and with the Canon webcam utility, you can use this as a webcam, even though this camera is from 2012. However, let's go out and do some shooting and see how they actually do fare against each other. So first up is a video test. Uh, obviously I have which camera was which and 
colors aren't too bad. Uh, the K30 seems to underexpose slightly. Now, here I'm just kind of goofing around, uh, just trying to see if there were any drop frames or anything like that. Uh, it didn't seem to drop any frames. Everything seemed to be relatively uh, the, the same in regards to frame rate and all that. Nothing out of the ordinary. And obviously the K30 is manual focus. Uh, so I was just doing this to test the Canon T4i's autofocus with the tracking. It did okay. Uh, colors are pretty much the same. Now the one thing is the Canon's files are massive in comparison to the K30. The K30 seems to produce very compressed uh, .mov files. And uh, let's go take some photos. Yeah, so there's some gulls coming in here and there. Let me check uh, the autofocus or the uh, continuous shooting speed here just to make sure. Huh, there is no, uh, doesn't look like there is a adjustable drive mode. Uh, it's either high speed or single. There's no high speed, low, medium, high. Uh, it doesn't appear to be anyway. Uh, one thing I did want to mention too, though, is this actually does have a GPS device settings option. Uh, so there is a GPS function, out, function built into the camera somewhere. Uh, and there's also an ultrasonic dust cleaning method. So it's not like the Pentax K30 where it just shakes the crap out of the sensor. This is, uh, you know, the ultrasonic thing, just like the Pentax K3, K32, K1, KP, you know, don't hear it when it fires up, don't hear it at all. Uh, so it's interesting that an entry-level camera like this actually has that from back in 2012. But let's get back to doing some shooting, see how good this thing is, because repetition is the only way this is going to work. And I am at 2500th of a second, at 6 at ISO 200. I think it seems to be nailing it, at least from what I can see in the viewfinder. In the Penta mirror viewfinder, not Penta prism. Okay, I want to get one of you guys coming right at the camera. Here we go. And get it off. Alright, here's the next one. And of course, you started to turn away. Because you went through that. Okay. And the one thing with this, uh, even in continuous shooting, it is very sticky if the subject is not actually moving. It will the focus will just rest right there. So the implementation of this is more convenient to use. You don't have to be flipping back and forth between continuous shooting and single shooting if the subject was moving and then it's not moving. So that is a nice, uh, nice discovery. Oh, and there is no uh, horizon uh, system in here or tilt or anything uh, that I can see. It, it just doesn't show. Um, I didn't see an option for it when I first glanced at the menu. Now, I do not have the owner manual for this. Uh, it was not provided to me, and I have not downloaded the manual. Wanted to try to have this experience as per usual. Somebody gets the camera, they don't go through the manual. They're a new person. It's their first camera. So, I ended up having to cut the video. There was more that I had recorded on scene. Uh, however, there was way too much wind and it was just completely inaudible. So anyway, uh, I think you get the gist of uh, what was going on. So in conclusion, what are my thoughts? Uh, ergonomic wise, the, the Pentax wipes the floor. Uh, you know, it's got the dual control dials. It has way more uh, beginner friendly options in regards to, uh, you know, various scene modes. Uh, the Canon, however... As long as there's an outline of the subject, even if it is blurred, it focuses like that. It's immediate. It knows exactly where to drive the lens, which direction, and it just acquires the focus pretty much immediately. However, 
with the Pentax, if the subject is completely out of focus and you're trying to get it in focus, the Pentax will actually drive the lens and achieve focus, whereas the Canon will not. So that one's pretty much a wash. Uh, neither one is inherently better, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, the other thing too is the Canon, as you can see from the images I acquired of, this, of uh, the various gulls that were in the sky, there is heavy vignetting and the metering seems to be focused directly on the center and it's just sh a ring of shadow outside that centered area. Uh, the metering is just not very good in comparison to uh, Pentax. Uh, other than that, uh, the shutter speed or sorry, continuous, uh, continuous shooting speed does seem slow and I'm actually surprised that I, you know, there was no option that at least that I could find in regards to changing it from low, medium, high, uh, whereas the Pentax does give you that option of low, medium, high. So again, more options on the Pentax camera. So at the end of the day, I still do think for a beginner friendly camera, Pentax still is better. Uh, and now with the KF, just a much better experience but even back in 2012 the k30 is still the superior camera and no i'm not getting into the whole aperture block thing uh you know th this canon had its own issues uh there was a moment when it just stopped reading the memory card i had to format it start over again and then it wouldn't read the card again i took the card out put it back in it read it okay uh and then uh, lost communication between various lenses. You know, so each each manufacturer has their thing. Uh, however, with the cameras functioning the way they should be, the Pentax is the better beginner-friendly camera. And those are my thoughts. Uh, you know, just looking at the overall whole thing. However, if you're focusing, no pun intended, strictly on acquiring focus, then yes, the Canon actually has the superior autofocus system and that's pretty much it if you like the video leave a like if you have not already please do subscribe always helps out if you want to support the channel that information is down there at the bottom of the description and if you have any questions or comments leave them down below and i do have uh, further access to the t4i so if there's anything else that you do want to see uh, let me know in the comments below and that's it i'm gonna go you'll see me on my next video i'm out